friends, I'm Jess. Welcome to the Hex Library, where I post reading, writing, book, and planner related content a couple of times a week. Today is going to be our review of Tender Beasts by Lizelle Sanberry. If you've been here before, you may know that Lizelle is one of my author tube friends, and therefore, I have been doing reviews of her books as they've come out. This is the first one that I've not had a release day vlog on. I failed miserably at that, but uh, we're at least going to get a review vlog up for you because I feel like it was a fantastic book and we should do that. I did finally get my copy. I picked it up on Saturday. I read the audiobook, which I pre-ordered, and then I had an arc of it and then I picked up the physical book about a week after it came out. So first, what's this book about? Tender Beast follows our main character, Sunny, who has four other siblings. She has two older sisters, an older brother, and a younger brother. This book starts out with a prologue that takes place about a year before the rest of the main story takes place. Um, Sunny is our main character, but we're also seeing the past from her mother's point of view. Her mother grew up on a ranch where they were one of the few black families who lived there, and there was this weird thing that happened in the past that is kind of taking place in the future as well. Well, in the present day, it was their future, but it's our present. Technically now it's our past. It's fine. Anyway, so there's weird stuff happening. There's people dying. Sonny's younger brother is accused of a murder that happened a year prior. Now more people are dying. They're trying to pin all of those murders on him as well. He's never really been a part of the family. The family has kind of ostracized him his entire life and no one really knows why. When Sonny's mother dies in the prologue, within our year in the future. And it's her knowing that like her mother had always wanted her to be like the head of the family, but her oldest sister is the one who has taken over. And so we're getting like, Sunny is a very like meticulous and perfect person on the outside, but is kind of just like a very angry person on the inside. She's really pulling in and hiding all of who she is um, because of the way that her mother raised her and the way that she was told to be, uh, to appear um, gracious and grateful for everything that her family has because her family has money and a lot of the other kids around where she is do not have those things. Their school that they go to is like a school for underprivileged in their area where it's kind of like kids who are smart can get, a, can get a scholarship to go there, but they also make their own kids go there. Like the Sunny's family make their kids go there. It's like a whole thing. And like she tries to be friends with everybody and uh, there's cult thing. Okay, it's it's a lot. Maybe I should just read the synopsis to you and that'll help. Sunny Bear has four siblings, but only one of them is a murderer. With the death of Sunny's mother, matriarch of the wealthy Bear family, Sunny's once picture perfect life is thrown into turmoil. Her mother had groomed her to be the family's next leader. So Sunny is confused when the only instruction her mother left her is a mysterious note take care of Dom. The problem is her youngest brother, Dom, has always been a near stranger to Sonny and seemingly a dangerous one if found guilty of his second degree murder charge. Still, Sonny is determined to fulfill her mother's dying wish, but when a classmate is gruesomely murdered and Sonny finds her brother with blood on his hands, her mother's simple request becomes a lot more complicated. Dom swears he's innocent, and although Sunny isn't sure she believes him, she takes it upon herself to look into the murder, a task made all the more urgent by the discovery of another body and another. As Sunny and Dom work together to track down the culprit, Sunny realizes her other siblings have their own dark secrets. She soon may have to choose, preserve the family she's always loved, or protect the brother she barely knows, and risk losing everything her mother worked so hard to build. I can't remember who I watched talk about this earlier in the week, but I feel like some of the things that are kind of left out of the marketing in this is the, like, the really weird cult vibes. Because on the ranch that her mother grew up on, there was this weird, like, milkman cult where there was a milkman who, if you, you know, did things for him, he would give you, you and your family, like, power, um, money, fortune, all of that. And so that's going on in the past timeline. And they're trying to, you know, as the book kind of goes on, you're seeing how those two timelines can connect. It's very weird. Um, it has a very big, um, like supernatural paranormal vibe to it. And it is set in the same world as Delicious Monsters, um, because our film crew from Delicious Monsters is mentioned in Tender Beasts. 
So I ended up giving this a 4.75 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed this book. I think that the character work was done so well because all of the characters have secrets to hide. And so as the book goes on, you're just finding like little bits and pieces about the different characters and like what they're trying to hide and who they really are. And especially in Sonny's family, like you want to hate them so much for the shit that they've done, but then you also kind of feel bad for them because not everything that happened to them was within their control. Control. And you especially feel bad for her brother, Dom, because you're like, is he a murderer or is he not? And we're not really sure. And you never really find out until like the very end, like what's really going on with Dom. And so it's a very weird vibe. And I like that. I don't know if you know this, but I like weird paranormal vibes. I think it was very like it moved. It had a great pace to it. Everything made sense. I didn't have any moments where I was just sitting there going, how the fuck did that happen? I don't know. Um, and you really are sitting there trying to like figure out for the good first half of this book, for me at least, I had no idea like who the killer was going to be because there's so many little pieces of different people that you're like, well, maybe it could be this person for this reason, or maybe it could be this person for this reason, or maybe this is what's happening, or, you know, maybe this person, you know, is doing this thing. And you, it takes so much of all of that to be put together in order for the truth to happen. And it's also one of those things where I, I love this in books. It's one of my favorite things. Some people don't like it. It's one of my favorite things. It's when you and the main character both think you know what's happening, but then the shoe drops and you're like, oh, this is the exact opposite of what I thought was going to happen. And then that happens a couple more times. And so by the end of the book, it is never where you thought things were going to go, but the ride to get there was a great time. And I really, really enjoyed that about this book. One thing I will say about this book, and like I kind of touched on with Sonny's family being very much like they're rich, but and they operate this school for like underprivileged people to go to, but then their kids go to the school as well. So one of the things that's really tackled in this book is the privilege of a black family who has money versus black families who don't. Um, so not just like white privilege versus um, the opportunities for black people, but how black people can also have their own privileges within their society and the different ways that they can kind of handle that um, and the way that people look at that from the outside. Um, I think that was woven in really well and I really uh, liked that aspect of it to look at it from a different point of view because again that's not a point of view that I can see in my real life um, so to see it through the perspective of characters I did enjoy and honestly I just I really enjoyed this book I had a great time reading it I liked all of the creepy aspects I liked all of like the moments of just not really knowing what was happening and being in Sunny's mind and like learning all of these things about her family was just I can't imagine thinking that I had this grip on my family and knowing exactly who everyone was and then seeing really who they were. Um, and even if that was the person that I thought it was, but maybe it takes a little, you know, U-turn to get there. Um, it definitely was very interesting. And Sunny had to make some serious choices in this book that I don't know that I would ever be able to make. So I think this really touches on like the, I mean, it, it is the last has to decide between preserving the family she's always loved or protect the brother she barely knows and risk losing everything her mother worked so hard to build. I mean, it's literally that and it's done very, very well. This book did not make me cry. This is the first Lizelle book that didn't make me cry. Ha ha, got you now Lizelle, you didn't make me cry this time. Um, because yeah, the delicious monsters made me cry and that is a horror book. So, I mean, it's fine. Anywho, if you like YA mysteries or thrillers or horror, I think this has enough elements of all of those things that it could be a book that you enjoy. If you like paranormal, definitely is paranormal. Um, if you like books about like different classes of society and like the privilege of people and cults and all of those things, they're all in here. I have dogs that bark, in case you didn't know. The bird is yelling at the dogs because they're barking, except she's yelling at Ruby, who has been dead for like three years. 
Oh God. All of those things, they're here. If you like any of those things, you should pick it up and check it out. If you have read this or any of Lizelle's other books and you wanna talk about those, hit me up in the comment section down below. I will link my review vlogs for the other three videos where you can watch me cry on camera below as well so that you can see those. Uh, that is all I have for today. Leave me a hand emoji of any sort down below for the hand on the cover. Uh, until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye.